So I get a call from a friend the other night. I haven't talked to him in a while, but he's a good enough friend that I answer the phone, even though he's just calling me with no warning, like it's 1986 or something. Anyway, glad I did, because he was in desperate need of somebody to hate religion with at the moment. It was the evening of his sister's funeral, and contrary to its sterling reputation, religion wasn't helping much. Instead, it has spent the entire process making shit more difficult than it had to be. And I'm not just talking about, like, you know, making my secular friend feel like an outcast at a remembrance for his beloved family member, though I'm sure it did that, too. I'm talking about the random obstacles that it created for him throughout. Now, obviously, I don't want to dive too much into my friend's personal shit on the show, but suffice to say that she was in the hospital before she died and they all knew what was coming. Or, I'm sorry, no, at least he knew what was coming because when the doctors explained it to him, he didn't argue back that God was capable of any miracle. While the rest of his family gathered to pray for impossibilities, he was inordinately burdened with all the real shit that has to happen when a person dies. On top of that, he was the one that had to be honest with her daughters instead of teasing her with talk of miracles and prayers answered and people looking down on him from heaven. So after dealing with all that shit and plenty more, we come to the day of the funeral. And if you've ever been the one non-believer at a funeral for a very religious family, you already know what that's like. And he's a polite guy. He doesn't want to offend anybody. He doesn't want to make any waves under the circumstances, obviously. So he's acquiescing to like one, will you pray with us after another? He's nodding along as people dismiss his family's grief with platitudes about a better place. He's suffering through more than one makes you wonder about your own mortal soul. Anyway, haven't seen you in a church in a minute conversations. But until this point, that's just what it's like to be the atheist when you lose somebody. Right. I mean, as fucked up as it is to say, deaths are the time that society is quickest to flaunt its prejudices against the non-religious. So every atheist learns to endure a certain amount of this shit, whether they want to or not. As rude as society finds our very existence to begin with, it's downright obscene at a funeral when our skepticism might rob somebody of their illusions of life everlasting. So, you know, this is definitely commiserate with a friend about it later kind of stuff, but it hasn't risen to the call no illusions about it on your way home from the wake levels just yet. That part would come that night after all the official stuff is over. My friend finds himself in possession of the urn that contains his sister's remains. Now, to be clear, he's flown into town for the occasion, but he lives elsewhere. The family home's all full up, so he's staying at a hotel. But before he heads back there, he swings by the family home to drop off the ashes. But he's not allowed to leave them because according to at least one member of the family, they will invite evil spirits into the home. Let me say that again, but more dripping with derision. They will invite evil evil spirits into the home. And again, again, we're not talking about me here. We're not talking about Eli. This is a guy who just wants to keep everybody happy, so he plays along. You know, after he accepts that this is indeed what's happening in the universe at this moment, he says something along the lines of like, well, is there uh, some kind of blessing we could say over them, though? Ward off the evil spirits because, you know, he has the self-restraint not to just say, isn't Jesus magic stronger than devil magic? And if not, are you worshiping the right fucking guy? But they're undeterred. The ashes of his sister are apparently goddamn haunted. So he has to take them back to his hotel and figure out what the hell he's going to do with them at this point. Now, I, I, I need to point out this dude, the whole family is Mormon. Now, now, I need to point out the person objecting here is Mormon. The whole family is Mormon. And I've read their fucking book. There's nothing in it or the Bible about cremated remains acting as a doorway into the fucking spirit realm. That's just some random shit this superstitious motherfucker managed to concoct on his own. There are no ghosts in Mormon theology, but that doesn't matter because virtually no American Christians even know their religion's official theology. Hell, outside of Mormons and Catholics, you're lucky if you can find leaders that know their official theology. I doubt the likes of Joel Osteen could convincingly define theology. So what you most often are left with is a hodgepodge of superstitions and sacred precepts, often contradictory, that percolate and bubble up unpredictably. Like, uh, you know, if haunted ashes were an official part of their script, they'd have an anti-haunted ashes spell that he could do or something. But since he's essentially making up his sincerely held beliefs as he goes along with little more than you never know to guide him, there's no ready solution to this made up problem. And again, it's worth emphasizing here that this is supposed to be religion's time to shine. The whole justification for it, as far as most of the secular world is concerned, is that it helps grieving people move on with their lives. But even if you think 
lie to a motherfucker so they'll shut up about their dead relative counts as solving a problem, religion still creates whole new problems along the way. And unlike reality, there is no roadmap for success. Yeah, end of life counselors can, at least to some degree, experiment with the normal problems that we encounter when we grieve. They can refine their recommendations and their therapies. They can get better over time. But when you start adding in random shit like my niece's ashes are haunted, how the fuck is anybody supposed to prepare for that? Look, I've never been a fan of organized religion, obviously, but it turns out that disorganized religion isn't any better. <laughs> 